Hey guys, welcome to another video on IGCSC Biology Revision. Today we're going to go through the menstrual cycle and a couple of other things like birth control and STI. So we'll begin the video. Right, so the menstrual cycle can look a little bit intimidating, but if you really think about it, it's not that complicated. So there's four main hormones that you need to know. We've got estrogen, which builds the uterus lining. You've got progesterone, which maintains the uterus lining and the FSH, which is the follicle stimulating hormone, and as the name would suggest, it causes one follicle in the ovaries to become mature. So the luteinizing hormone then is secreted from the pituitary gland and it stimulates ovulation. So ovulation is when the ovum is released from the ovaries and the ovum actually comes from a mature follicle. A mature follicle is basically an ovum uh, surrounded by other various cells and they play a part later but we'll take a look at that in a bit more detail. So we'll just take you back to the first stages of the menstrual cycle which was when the lining breaks down of course. When the uterus lining breaks down you get blood that's released from the vagina as a result. So the reason why the lining breaks down to begin with is due to lacking or low progesterone levels which is crucial in maintaining the thickness of the lining. Right? So the progesterone levels decrease or is low in the initial stages of the menstrual cycle and therefore causes the lining to break down. Once the lining is broken down, it starts to rebuild itself again. And the reason for that being is the estrogen levels gradually increasing as we see in the graph here. So when the estrogen levels increase, then it will start to build up the lining again. What's really important is sort of the day 13 to 14 mark, which is when the follicle stimulating hormone gets elevated, right? And what that tends to do, as I suggested before, is that it matures a single follicle into a mature follicle, which contains the developed ovum. So let's take a look at this diagram here. We've got a single follicle out of many. This one is the lucky one. It gets chosen and therefore it develops, right? It develops and it turns into a mature follicle. And this is all caused by FSH at approximately day, approximately day 13 to 14. So when this happens, you get a mature follicle, which is an egg cell or an ovum surrounded by other various cells. And the luteinizing hormone, which is this hormone here, gets secreted on day 14. And what happens then is that it causes the mature follicle to basically release the ovum into the oviduct, right? So now that is ovulation and ovulation has happened. So the remaining cells from the mature follicle then become something that we call the corpus luteum, as we can see here. The corpus luteum is really important because this in itself starts to release progesterone, right? So by this point, the lining is actually well developed because of the estrogen levels that had gone up over time. And so the progesterone from the corpus luteum therefore starts to maintain this lining and to keep it thick. Eventually, the corpus luteum, if there's no fertilization that happens, will degenerate. And if that degenerates, then the progesterone levels will start decreasing again because there's no other source of progesterone. And when that happens, we get taken back to day zero when the you know, menstruation happens and the lining breaks down because of low progesterone levels and the cycle starts again. So overall, things are not too complicated. If you go step by step, things are pretty easy. So another topic that the syllabus wants you to understand is birth control. I'm not going to spend too much time on this because it's pretty self-explanatory, but uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and we'll talk about prevention and we'll also talk about promotion. So preventing birth, for example, would constitute, would, 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 there's a couple of things, right? So we've got the natural methods, which is basically abstinence, which where you just basically don't indulge in any sexual activity. We've got withdrawal, which is to pull out before uh, ejaculation. So therefore preventing any sperm getting into contact with any sort of egg in the female body part. We've got the rhythm method, suggesting that some parts of the menstrual cycle are safer to indulge in sexual contact than others. So, you know, ladies can sort of work on that and keep a calendar. Um, chemical wise, you can have, you know, contraception, spermicides, which aim to kill sperm. We've got mechanical methods, well known condoms, femidoms, diaphragms. The femidom and the diaphragms are for females, and the condoms are obviously for males, but all these 
are basically physical barriers to to prevent sperm and the egg from you know joining each other. Uh, we've got surgical method, methods such as vasectomy and laparotomy. Uh, basically, vasectomy is tying, well, cutting and tying the uh, the male sperm duct. Uh, therefore, no sperm is uh, is allowed to escape, uh, making its way from the testes. So, you know, that's that's one way. We've got lap laparotomy, which is basically the same, except for the fact that it's when, in women's this time, and you sort of tie the the oviduct. So, therefore, no no egg actually makes its way uh, to the uterus and no fertilization happens. Um, so if promotion is more for people that uh, are infertile and but still want a child. So the artificial insemination method basically increases the chances of pregnancy. Uh, this is only when the male is infertile, right? So a sperm from a donor gets inserted into the woman's uterus during ovulation and hopefully that can fertilize her. And uh, the baby, of course, won't actually have any genetic link with the male partner, but it will still allow them to have a child. Uh, fertility drugs, they contain mainly FSH and LH, which aim to cause multiple eggs from the ovary to be released and therefore increase the chances of pregnancy. Uh, in, vitro, uh, in vitro fertilization is a technique whereby if a woman is infertile due to, for example, docked, uh, blocked oviducts, then a sample of her ovum can be collected and the ovum and the sperm is then fertilized in a petri dish and once that is okay and you've got an embryo, the embryo is put back into the woman's uterus and therefore uh, impregnating her. So, sexually transmitted infections comes next where by definition it's, it's, it's an infection that is transmitted by body fluids through sexual contact. Right, so an HIV virus the uh, human immunodeficiency virus is just one example of an STI, right? So the HIV infection results in AIDS, and this is, you know, this is why it's so bad. Because what happens is the HIV virus starts to attack the lymphocytes in the bloodstream if you are infected. And remember, lymphocytes produce antibodies, and antibodies attack antigens or microbes in the body. So if you have decreased lymphocytes, you'll have uh, reduced antibodies, and that will result in a loss of immunity against diseases, right? So there's certain methods of transmission. So for example, unprotected sex or sharing needles, for example, you know, drugs like heroin. Uh, or the mother also has to be quite careful because if she has it, it can actually be transferred by uh, uh, breast milk, right? So if you want to prevent these transmissions, uh, if you want to tra prevent the transmission of HIV, then first of all, it'd be advisable to use condoms, right? Because that's uh, that acts as a physical barrier, so you don't actually get the mixing of fluids. You've got abstinence, which is just refraining, of course, from sexual interaction, uh, using sterilized needles, or just don't share the needles at all, right? Or bottled milk if the mother knows that she has HIV uh, and she's also got a child to feed. So thanks for watching guys, if you like this video and you want more IGCSE re revision videos then please hit subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.